to this edition <laughs> of the Final Whistle on Learnmedia.tv. And we have our usual email, info at learnmedia.tv and a text line as well, 083 300 2695 083 300 2695. Good evening, Joe Waters, and welcome along again. Good evening, Pat. And good evening, uh, Chris Price, and welcome. Good evening, guys. Uh, I forget the other man's name now. I think, uh, oh, yeah, it's good evening, Derwin. <laughs> welcome along again. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How's everybody? <laughs> no, um, we're, not, we're not in any running order, um, but. Uh, there's a few things we'll just get out of the way. And we, we, as, as we were talking before we came on here about uh, the incident in the uh, Glasgow Celtic and Rangers match, we'll, cover, we'll come to that as well, you know. And general, generally, I think uh, when you look at the amount of soccer matches that have been played globally, the inst- uh, thankfully, the instances of uh, this kind of thing are tiny, very, very small. That is, of course, not to exonerate, exonerate when they happen. Rugby Union, the women's Six Nations is on, lads. I'm sure you were watching it over the weekend. I, I saw, I was doing something in the house, but I, I was, happened to see the, the France-Ireland match, if you could call it a match. Uh, France 40, Ireland 5, Wales 24, Scotland 19, and um, uh, Italy and England, I think that was, uh, what was it, 57-0 or something. At 70, no, 74-0. <laughs> No, we, we were we were laughing, not laughing, we were slagging Italy in the Six Nations for the men. But really, you have France and England who are miles and miles and miles and miles ahead. Did anyone ever see the women's Six Nations or highlights ranting? I no. no. watch bits of it now, to be honest with you. It's, it's substandard stuff, to be fair. It's, it's basically um, a, two professional outfits against... Um, for amateur teams. That's exactly the best way I can describe it. Um, why is there women's rugby at all? Is it because men are playing and the women want to play it? I mean, really. I wouldn't they're, begrudge they're, them playing it. I mean, if they, if they want to play it, that's enough. The but they're not capable, surely, of playing world-class rugby game, are they? Well, there's some there's some rugby teams that are not capable of playing world-class rugby as well, if you think about it, because there's really only maybe 10 world-class teams out of a country, out of a world that has over 210 con- states no. and countries. So, I mean, that's and, less than 5% of the world's population that would be classed as world. Uh, and world doesn't, that, doesn't that make my point, really? Who's the women's rugby game after that? That's surely not an audience. No one watches it. There's no one going to the matches. Well, I, but we had this discussion two or three weeks ago, Pat, when I basically told you that these matches are not put on for prime time television. I mean, England's first match at tournament was played at 12 o'clock noon on a Saturday. So it didn't affect the, the soccer viewers. Or, or whatever else was on that particular day, you know. Um, and these week's matches will be making sure that you know you've got the Grand National on, you've the Masters, you have a big soccer match on Sunday. Um, and these, these, I'm afraid the women's, you know, what they should have done. I understand what they're trying to do and have their own slot, but they're actually going to be um, kind of they're, they're going to be stuck in camouflage by the rest of the sport. What they should have done was put these matches on as curtain raises to the men because you would still get 30 40 000 people watching it you know what they did in their twickenham a good few years ago well it wasn't that good for you a couple of years ago was that they would put the autumn internationals on at eight o'clock at night after england's played at three o'clock and they basically got an empty stadium so you know as my point i made before is that you know it if you look at women's sport in general it's men that are the majority that go to them. The women don't go. It's as simple as that. Maybe women aren't interested in sport the way men are. Or maybe when it comes to men's sport, women would only rather watch the top. Maybe women have a good um, grasp of knowledge that they want to go and see the elite. I mean, as I said, 80,000 could go to an all Ireland hurling final next July. And I can guarantee you 25, 30% be made up of women. So maybe they've got a good, a good uh, knowledge of the game. And Joe, I mean, we're not we're not anti women here now. We're not trying to be either. But Joe, we have to have be honest about these things. I mean, women's rugby. I know you watch many of the matches. I just see any of them. They're probably not televised anyway, are they over there? Um, they actually they were. Uh, they're on one of the stations here. Um, I think they were on Peacock. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch it because it was on the same time as the soccer matches were on. Yeah, uh, but. You know, 
I think the hardest part of it is, I mean, I support them playing the games. You know, I think everybody has a right to play any game that they want against their against their, their own gender and what have you. Um, but the part that I have a problem with is not a problem, but I, what I don't uh, really grasp is why they think they can come in or they can push this in at a level that's going to be competitive with sport, other sports that have been around a lot longer. And, and, and right yeah. when you're fighting, you're fighting an uphill battle. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just remember the article there a few weeks ago uh, when everybody was up in arms about the girls' rugby team that was made tug out in a, in a, a, a U-Haul shed or something like that um, uh, with no bathrooms and no real dressing rooms. You know, and it, people have got, and I saw the other day also, there was an article where um, a young lady was talking about, um, uh, I think the League of Ireland, the Ladies League of Ireland, and they're going, you know, we can't be a real sport until we stop having to pay to play. You know, they're still they're still having to fund the clubs in their own pockets. You know, so there has to be something somewhere that, that is supporting this. And and where is that going to come from? I know, and uh, Darwin, I suppose, until some of the rich wealthy, well-off networks buy into something like women's rugby. And we're not picking on women's rugby specifically. We're only seeing it because it was on the weekend, the Women's Six Nations. I mean, a lot of people didn't even know it was on, which is a marketing problem as well. But, Darren, did you watch any of it? No, I didn't see any of it. And, um, well, you, you were watching something else, obviously. I saw, I saw some of it, all right. But anyway... Uh, also, I mean, obviously, um, Connacht beat Benetton in the rugby championship while we're on rugby. And uh, Leicester beat Munster, uh, as expected, here down in Town Park in the McCullough base, uh, 34-19. And my old buddy, he's not my old buddy, I wish he was, Ronan O'Gara, La Rochelle won a, 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 a humdinger of a match, a fisty cost between... No, almost between uh, Ron O'Gara and the manager of Bordeaux. It was great fun to watch on the sideline. Uh, um, can I, they won. Uh, they can won. I, yeah, go on. Can, can I make the point before you change the subject there about women's sport as this, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there are certain sports where I would pay to watch women's sports, like tennis, like golf, stuff like that, okay? Athletics, swimming, you know, where they are, there's, there's absolutely 100% world-class athletes. But I think yeah. there's some sports where a lot of the women sports, they're trying to run before they can walk in that what they've done is that instead of what they, what, what most sports have done is they go grassroots for grassroots first, build it up, then get to an international level. What the women have seemed to have done in the last 15, 20 years is go international first, but there's no grassroots. And that's the problem. I mean, if you take Irish women's rugby for, as, a, as a point, they're going international. Right, and they've gone very vocal. They actually wrote a letter to the Irish government about the way they were treated. But if you take the Irish national team away from, there is a very, very, very mediocre national league. Okay, and when you see the biggest problem that women's sports have is that they're asking for equal treatment, they're asking for equal pay, they're asking for equal. But the thing about it is, is this: any time I see a women's sports event on, the admission fee is a fraction of what it will be for men's fee. And the reason being is that if they were the same price as the men's, people wouldn't pay it. I mean, if you were to watch the Ireland play, say, England in rugby in Aviva Stadium, and at the moment, they're not even allowed into Aviva Stadium in Dublin. But if they were, would you pay 130 euro to watch them play? I doubt it very, very much, Pat. And you look at that, and, and, when, and when you get one of the biggest sporting events in Irish women's sport, which would be the All Ireland Gaelic the ladies, the All Ireland ladies football final, and they got a crowd of fifty thousand. The maximum price of a ticket was twenty euro, and you were yeah. watching three matches in the one day. The All Ireland hurling final and Gaelic football final two weeks previously was eighty euro ticket. So that's the difference. People would not pay the eighty euro to watch a ladies Gaelic football All Ireland final. I can guarantee you that. If they are, 
you will see no more than two or three thousand hours. So that's the issue. They're not bringing in the money to justify equal pay, and it's it, it's not me being sexist. It's me being realistic and factual. And well, um, I mean, the reality is, you know, you look at other countries like here in the US, <laughs> when they're brought in Title Nine and uh, all of that that um, women's sports had to be supported and what have you. I mean, we've had girls playing soccer here mm. since the 60s, 70s. Yes. Right? We haven't had that in Ireland. You looked at, I don't know if any of you saw this over the weekend, but Barcelona played... Uh, um, Real Madrid. Real Madrid, Madrid yeah. At uh, Camp Nou. What was yeah. it? Nearly 90,000 people at the game? Uh, 91,000, I've written down here, John. 91,356. 91,000. So, but again, those countries have been playing for, they've had girls participating in soccer for a long, long time. And unfortunately for us, other countries have, have been ahead of us in that department and we're playing catch up. And unfortunately, that's the way it is. You know, yeah. and it, it's like, if you were to put our women's national team, uh, soccer team out against Spain or France or England or the US, uh, you know, our girls would be very fortunate to, to get a result. That it be, They may get a result one out of 10 times, but ju just because we just don't have the quality yet to compete against them. And, uh, well, and that's, that's what's happening right now. I mean, I, I was reading that article again the other day. It's like, again, we've got professionals in England and France playing against amateurs, amateurs in this country that don't even don't even have probably a proper place to train. I mean, Chris just said there, the Irish national, women's national team is not even allowed to play in the Aviva. Yeah? Well, well simply because, simply because uh, it's a big stadium, obviously, and the, 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 the crowd wouldn't be there. So they're, they're like any other sport, they'd be down to the smaller stadium where, where it would look better. For the viewer, but it's not. Sure. But that. But it's not. It's not. Pat, and I'll tell you why. Because in England, if you play for the English national team in rugby, you play at Twickenham, and if you play for England national team in soccer, you play at Wembley. Simple as that. You do that because they they have gone that high level, and they have because what they've done is they put they have put the money into it. That England yeah. have put the money into it, right? Ireland, you know what. You, you look, listen, listen. I've seen matches over the weekend played at Crow Park that had 2,000 on it, right? That's men's sport, right? You're going to have ladies' sport on next weekend in Crow Park that's going to have two men and the dog. That's what's going to happen, right? So they're playing these matches at Crow Park. So, you know, I actually think, you know, in my opinion, that it will actually, everyone wants to play at the highest level in the better stadium. And Dance Down Road in its current form is one of the better stadia. Now, the RFU are saying, no, you're going elsewhere. They're going to say, well, it looks better. Yeah, but the players, I mean, the, the argument about Croke Park for years was, we don't care how many go to match, the players want to play in Croke Park. And one thing I would say about the GA is, they will play matches in Croke Park for men or female, right, at the higher level, even though it may cost them money because that's what the players want. But the RFU have said, oh, God, no, you're playing in Cork or you're playing in Athlone or you're playing in Donnybrook or you're playing in the RDS because it looks better for TV. Look, don't cut. Listen, hang on a second. This, this, this cut, cut to the chase here. They don't want to play in Lansdowne because they know it will cost them money having to put people into steward for a crowd that won't turn up. That's what they're afraid of. It's the insurance company. I know, yeah. It's, 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 it's you, know, well you know what it comes down to in the finish? It's money. Well, it, we, it is money, but it's also respect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, they, don't, they don't respect the game. They yeah. don't respect the players playing the game. If you play for Ireland and you're representing Ireland, you should be representing, like the old days in Santry, right? If you ran for Ireland, you ran at Santry Stadium. They didn't send you down somewhere else, the high school field somewhere else to run. You ran in Dublin at Santry Stadium. Same way if you reached a... a uh, a cup final, uh, Gaelic or hurling, you played at yeah. uh, Pro Park. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the respect for the, the individual sports are huge. And I don't care whether it's male or female, it doesn't matter who's willing to come 
the fact is that these ladies are playing at the highest level that they can. And they're, they're role models for the, the future internationals. How are, we, how are we ever going to encourage more kids to take part if they're not allowed to play at uh, the Aviva and big stadiums like that? Exactly. Because that's what it's all about. You hear, exactly. you talk to any footballer, their dream is always to play at Wembley. Yeah. Always. Uh, that's true. We yeah. wish to go. As, we wish to go as well, not to you know. And we do, you know, and we wish them. We wish for swifter. Well, we do, progress. but it's coming. The progress has got to come from the fact is there has to be a shut. There has to be a two way street on this. There has to be an acknowledgement from the ladies who are playing the game that Rome wasn't built in a day. That they have to get the structures right. That, that what they're doing is the, it's the house of cards having international worrying about the international game when you've got no grassroots structure. It's the, the grassroots structure will carry you on in the bad times. I mean, Ireland five or six years ago won the Grand Slam in ladies rugby in the Six Nations. And now they're the only team in the Six Nations that will not go to this year's World Cup because the standards are falling. Because when you have, when you don't have the players come through, you may once in a lifetime get a crop of players in any sport that will do well. But once they fall away, and you've nothing to come up with or to, to, come, to push through, to push, to, to push the talent through, then what's going to happen is the current situation, and I have to be honest with you before we, t- we change subjects here, I found that this new coach, you know what I mean, and we were talking about it last night, I think this new coach decided la- this weekend not to play the best player that they have for fear of giving the bad signal to the players that played last week is an absolute ridiculous decision because... We don't have the players at our disposal to leave our best player off, whether no. she's, you know, and that's the way it is. And if you're, if, if you as a coach are afraid of upsetting one or two individuals because they didn't play last week, well, then they're in the wrong game because I, as Joe will tell you, and as Derwin will tell you, sport is a cruel, cruel life. You know, you, I saw last night, one of the, one of the, one, a funny, kind of snooker match last night where John Higgins was five frames up, needed one to win, lost six frames in a row. And it was like when Neil 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 Robertson won, it was the whole room was deflated. Why? Because that's sport. It's cruel. Yeah. You do not, you cannot muddy coddle people when it's about sport. It's you're either, so, good, you're either I, good or you're not. It's as simple as yeah. that. And that's I the way it's going to be. I was shouting for Neil Robertson, so I'm delighted he won anyway. But anyway, uh, the final whistle is the program. Uh, info at their media is our email and our text is 083 300 2695. Derwin, we're on to the Premier Soccer. Liverpool beat, uh, did you see soccer over there again, Derwin? Liverpool beat Wat- Watford, Man City won. Chelsea yeah. was stuffed. Chelsea was stuffed in Sanford Bridge. What, what an amazing result that was for Brentford. And Ericsson. <laughs> and Ericsson, you know, I mean, they were, they were all saying on the radio, is Ericsson, where is he going to end up next season? I'd say he'll stay with them. Man United and Leicester drew, and uh, West Ham beat Everton. And the Spurs are quietly going about their business, 5 0. Uh, will Harry stay? We're not even going to get in there because we've so much talk about Harry. He's not going to go to Man United anyway. Uh, you can be sure of that thing if he's going to go anywhere. But, uh, Derwin, I want to ask you, being a, a lifelong sufferer, I mean, fan of Man United, um, there's speculation in the press. I was looking across different newspapers now. This is not just one. So it's pretty solid. It's either Pochettino or Eric Ten Hag of Ajax are, are the two ma- saviors, saviors for Man United. What do you think yourself? I don't think there's a saviour needed. I think it needs a lot more than just a saviour coming in. I think, you know, you watch United and they just look pitiful to me. You know, there's nothing about United that looks exciting. That you've got, you got Rashford doesn't look like he even wants to come on the pitch. Pogba, <laughs> Pogba to me is, I don't know what Pogba does. I'd love to see him go to Real Madrid or something, just get rid of him. I don't care where he goes, to be honest. Um, I just find it desperately sad to see a team as good as United and a club as good as United just doing what they're doing. They just and, look uh, lost completely. 
Is Ronaldo, is Ronaldo going back to, to Portugal for the weekend, was he? Uh, I don't know. I just I think he no, thought the weather forecast was a bit wet and yeah. he, he, they are giving that a miss. He had blue yeah. light symptoms so, uh, on Friday and then they tried him again on Saturday and he, he wasn't ready for it. But I watched, I watched that game and I watched it with great interest and I, I watched... Um, I looked at the United bench well, during an injury uh, timeout and you yeah. had you had Matic, you had uh, Lingard, you had um, Jones, you had um, uh, who else? Oh, Rashford. Uh, you had um, oh, the little Spanish guy. Yeah, there. I've got Matt on the bench. Yeah, and I, I'm 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 looking at this and I'm going. They, they didn't even look interested in the game. You know, they were their faces were as long as today and tomorrow, and it, it was just there, there was nothing that, about them that was inspiring. I mean, if you're a coach and you looked over your shoulder, you wouldn't want to put any of them on the field. You know, I mean, let's be honest. United didn't play until Leicester scored, and then all of a sudden. They came alive. That was after 60 minutes. And they, they played for it. And then I read in, in the paper this morning that all the, the ballyhoo about uh, Eric Ten Hag being the p- potential new coach. And the, the dressing room are divided on whether they want to have him or not. Yeah. Since when, since when did players have an opinion on who was going to be the manager of a club? Yeah. You know, yeah, I saw yeah. it last. I saw it last week where Louis Van Gaal put um, Van, Virgil Van Dyke in his place. Van Dyke says in the paper, he said, "Oh, I don't like playing in the three back. I prefer playing in a four back, like Liverpool. That's what I want to play." And Louis Van Gaal said, "The coach chooses the tactics. The players just play." And the yeah, story. Exactly. And Louis, Louis Van Gaal is at the moment is, is getting treatment for prostate cancer. And yeah, we wish he is. Him, yeah, we wish, wish him wish, well. well. And what do you think, Chris? Um, Pochettino or Van H- Ten Hag? Or will any will the manager make a bloody difference at all? I, I think the manager who would be the best manager for United would be Antonio Conte, but he won't go because United wouldn't have him because he's too his own man, and that's the problem. United have always had... I mean, Van Gaal was a brilliant manager. I thought was a brilliant manager of United, but just didn't have the players. He was probably maybe five years past his best. Um, I, I, I think the biggest mistake they made was was United was, was getting David Moyles. Because, I mean, in 11 years with Everton, he won absolutely nothing. Not even a League Cup. Not even an FA Cup. And that was my biggest thing about, about Moyes. I mean, this is a guy who was never going to win the league with Everton. Nearly went down once or twice, and a cup would have been his best option to go for. A bit like what Wigan did, and what other other clubs like that. Yeah, did, right? yeah. Didn't do it. Didn't. It wasn't even to a sniff of a final, and that's that's why he should never got it. And then and then it all started going. Then basically that the, the the trigger the trigger happy board started to go, and um, Marino is was always always was going to be a divisive figure. Um, I think Van Hal. Didn't get enough time, in my opinion. Maybe he just said, you know what? I want out of this anyway. But I do feel, I think Conte would be the one that would take United further, but the board would run a mile from him because they're scared witless of him. And what about Everton? Did anyone ever see the, the Frank Lampard the interview after Everton being beaten by West Ham? Yeah. I don't yeah. know what he, I don't know what he sees. <laughs> He's, well, definitely not watching the same guy. he's definitely watching, not watching the same guy, game we're watching. No. Well, and he said they were a bit, you know, they played really well and they were this and they were that. And yeah. I understand you want to be positive. I get a bit of that. But he had no other choice to come out with that. You've got he had no choice. A bit of realism, Derwin, he had no choice to come out after what he said the previous week about them not having the, you know, what sits to play for. Right. So he yeah. had to be more positive because obviously someone took him aside and says, Frank, you can't use that language. Well, well, I mean, I, it's, not, it's not even the language itself. It's just having the thought process to think like that about absolutely. your team. You can think yes. what you like, but 
once you verbalize it, you're not you're not taking it back. You can't take it back. And no. now all of a sudden, if you lose, if you lose your players because you start blaming them for stuff, then you are on a slippery slope to being in the championship next year. Like some group, uh, the Road to Nowhere, who uh, were on the Road to Nowhere, what's the group that did that? I forget their names, but it's a great yeah. song. Talking Heads, David Brown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Celtic beat Rangers in the Old Firm Derby by two goals to one. They're six points clear. And, uh, well, I don't know. It, it, I don't know about Scottish soccer. I mean, I, I can't talk. Look at ourselves around, look around this year, but... I don't know. It doesn't excite me anymore as it did in the 70s and 60s and 70s, certainly. I'm going back a good bit now. I don't know myself. But there was an incident in that match we were talking about before we came on air. Now, I mean, obviously, uh, it was, would you describe it as a violent, uh, an act of violence? 100%. 100%. It's broken glass on 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 a field. It is, it's, it's, the nearest thing to GBH without GBH ever happening. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was tough going, all right. And uh, as, as you know, Chris, I mean, we're not condoning violence. None of us on the panel here will condone violence. But I mean, as you said, back in the 60s and 70s, there were no plastic bottles. That doesn't mean you should no. go in no. and drink a bottle of beer and throw a bottle at the no. players. You might feel and like Listen, it, the, the point I make about Celtic and Rangers is this, right? It is a tin, two tin pot clubs in a tin pot league. Right, with a tin pot administration that are afraid of their wits end to make a decision against the Rangers. That they will not any if that match had taken place in any other association in Europe, I will guarantee you the home club would be faced with about a hundred grand fine and they would be locked down. There would be um, matches behind closed doors for the next three or four home matches. Yet they will not, I, I'd be stunned. If it happens, because it won't happen, because they will do, they will find them forty grand or fifty grand. But they should be barring them, and they should even making sure that should they even they shouldn't even be allowed to play at their home field for the next two or three matches. But they will allow them to do it because that's the Scottish Football Association throughout. Now, Joe, a good luck story. Joe Grimsby stuffed Chesterfield four one. Did you notice? Yeah, you get, yeah, that was a very yeah, good result. Was- that was a great result for them. Uh, Chesterfield yeah. has been a pretty good place for Grimsby over the years. Um, but that, that result on Saturday was certainly um, was yeah. certainly uh, pretty eye-opening uh, to go there, a team that's above you, a couple of places above you in the league, and to, yeah. to beat them quite handily. That was great. What well, Wasn't there, um, uh, uh, what's his name, an Irish guy on the team? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, um, I, read, I read about that um, Hula yesterday. Hula Hinnadarty, forget that. I was on their Twitter page because I, I share the programs on their Twitter page and just fantastic scenes. I, I, I like looking at those happy scenes, a happy story. That's our soccer. Now, we'll, we'll get to the World Cup try at the end of the, 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 at the, end of the show, the, the, the eight groups are in it. And we're going to pick out our World Cup winner. I didn't tell the lads anything about this until now. So <laughs> we, Thanks for we us did. getting our research done. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Good stuff. Anyway, the, the, you're listening to the final whistle on their media have TV. Tell all your friends about us. And press the red button on the right-hand side to subscribe to our channel. Now, coming up, uh, obviously, um, our golf lovers there, the Chevron, or the Chevron... Um, ladies uh, golf tournament was won by uh, Jennifer uh, Chupko. I have to, I had to write this down because uh, obviously I wouldn't be that familiar with all the lady golfers. Maybe, um, well, I won't say which ones because you might construe it the wrong way. <laughs> so she, I'm just a bit confused when he says I, I'm not familiar with all the lady golfers. <laughs> I just want to know. I just like to know which ones you are familiar with. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How familiar are you? Yeah, I didn't even get that's like you saying that. that's like that's like someone saying he was known well he was well known to the police. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They knew his first name. But um she shot 66, 70, 64, 74. But Leona Maguire was in the field as well, but she dis- disappointing tournament, you know. She shot a 72, 64, 
74 and 69. And she never really got going. She's minus two, but uh, well, top 40. And the Texas Open was won by another golfer who I wouldn't be that familiar with was um, Spawn, JJ Spawn, minus 13 under. Did you see any of that Texas Open? Um, of course, Rory McIlroy missed the cut, but that's no surprise, Delvin, was it? No, he got paid to get for bribe playing by Valero, so he's quite happy. Yeah, but uh, what about McElroy? I, I know that we have um, the Masters coming up. Obviously, I have no idea why he's so short priced in the in 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 the bookies. You know, I have no idea. He's no fun. You know, why would he be up there and betting? You because know? they, because it. Because he could have one week where, because I tell you, maybe I'm, I just feel when it comes to betting, he's at a low price to attract the Irish and UK followers to lump on him. And if the bookies lose or the bookies win, like he doesn't, if McElroy does not qualify or win the tournament or whatever, then they that's their profit made for the entire week. Yeah. That's what, so they, they're, they're, they're trying to say, oh, look, he's a favorite, back him at 10 to 1 or whatever. And now all these guys going, oh, yeah, we'll put McElroy on, big money on McElroy, blah, blah, blah. And then mm. if someone wins at 40 to 1, they're going to go, ah, great, great news. Well, that's I, how you've, got, it. you've got Cameron Smith at 16s to 1. Yeah. And you've, you've got Justin Thomas at 20 to 1. Or I got, I got those two last week at those odds. And uh, uh, most of the bookies pay up to six to eight places anywhere. Each way I'm talking about now, each way a bit. On yeah. Mass, you know? So it's 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 just something that we're not condoning a bit here, guys. We're just saying if you're watching something over the weekend, it's a bit of a laugh. Joe, would you be watching the Masters over the weekend, do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will. And uh, I don't know who I'm going to back. I have a nice, little, I have a nice quiet flutter there on Adam Scott each way. Do you? I think I will, yeah. I think I will. Just, but I know just, you were going to give up money that freely. I could have asked for a rise. Woods is going to play. No. No. Yeah, I've yeah, got to, yeah. Tiger Woods is all, he's all over the media because, of, well, because of advertising and all that. Definitely you know won't that. play. No. He definitely won't play. You can't might, German, he won't play. He won't play. German, you think he will, do you? I've got a sneaky feeling he will. You see, this is a different tournament, and I had this discussion with my young lad during, during the weekend, that this is a completely different tournament to any other... This is not even a PGA event. This is a completely different tournament. If it was a PGA event, I would have to probably declare maybe 32, set 48 hours beforehand, and then there's a reserve list that they have to pick from. But because this is a purely invitational tournament, if Tiger withdraws, there's no replacement. So he can, he's due to tee off, I think, at two o'clock on Thursday. He can basically not withdraw until 10 to 2. Well, that's what they've said, that it's going to be on the day, tee off day, that he's going to make his decisions to whether he's going to play or not. I think you'll find that there's there's other another angle to this as well. You know, his contract with Nike will be that he plays in all four majors. Yeah. Or he'll be ducking out of some dough. So it wouldn't shock me if he pegged up Thursday and pulled out Friday. That that yeah, fine. Because then well, he's complete, completed his part of the Nike contract. Oh, mm -hmm. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. But is, yeah. But isn't that isn't that isn't that and I'm gonna choose my words carefully here. Isn't that pulling the wool over someone's eyes? Yeah, but it it it's it until until someone actually shuts these loopholes down, these guys will do this all day long. Does he really need the money to do that? Um, I don't think he needs the money, but I think when you've had the money, you quite have him more of it. So it's yeah, legal theft in the way. Let's let's be honest about this. Woods is not going to win another tournament. No, not in my uh, opinion. Uh, Woods is not competitive anymore as a as a golfer. We're talking about women in sport at the top of the show, and really, it's a distraction for the other golfers. And I think even in the he's not fifty, quite fifty yet. Is he, Derwin? Um, no, no, he's 
I was going to say mid-40s. Is he late 45, 40? 46, I say. Yeah. 46 or 7. So, I mean, really, he should wait for the for the over-50s tour beside this kind of carry-on. He must be 100 to 1 if he's in the betting at all, is he? Were you 100 to 1? Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take 100 to 1 to play, to, for him to play. He'd be about he'd be 500, 600, 1,000 to 1 to win. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 guy, the, guy, the guy was hanging on one leg. This, this be fair. Any, I mean, this, this be fair. If he was golf, if he was playing any other sport from golf, he wouldn't be able to. I mean, the last time I was watching it this evening, um, while they were uh, while while they were showing um some play from the from from live at the range, you know, they were showing old clips of him over the last couple of months, and he was wearing a sock or like a one of those kind of bandages that you wear for like compression, so that. You, <laughs> To, so that, that you don't get blood clots and stuff like that. So I mean, that's how serious the injury was. That he actually has to make sure that there's proper blood flow to the leg. That's what it looks like to me, right? So I mean, this guy was in serious trouble. Now, as I said, if this was a, if this was the U.S. Open, he wouldn't touch it with a barge ball because he had to declare within two or three days because there, there's there's a guy waiting, but. Um, but the Masters is a completely different event because it's completely invitational. There's no replacement system. There's no Derwin doesn't make it. Chris will take his place. That's not happening. If if they, it could easily be a situation where they say the top fifty in the world will play in the Masters. If for argument's sake, ten players are unable to play due COVID, for argument's sake, they're not going to draft in ten players to make up the numbers. That's the way the Masters operate. Oh, I didn't realise that, but uh, anyway, look. Yeah, there'll uh, be 10 players short. Yeah, oh. I, I, what I want to say was, apart from my each way is, I, I know tips, so I know very little about golf, would be Adam Scott. And I'm going to have a, uh, my 50p each way on uh, Mr. Lowry as well. You'd never Justin know. Thomas, I'm going for Justin Thomas. Good and, man. Uh, yeah. Well, Joe, you had all the tips, you know. You should be collecting a lot of money by the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron, yeah. Smith, Cameron Smith, Justin Thomas. Yeah, there we are. I heard it here first, The final whistle. Now, one of the top professional snooker players, uh, he's Chinese. He lives, uh, he's age 35. He lives in Sheffield. He was caught on CCTV kicking, kicking and punching his girl around the place, slamming her up against the wall. Um, it was taken to court, and of course, he, he is a, uh, um, in, he's living in Sheffield, Liang Win Bo, taken to court, and he got a slap on the wrist. It sends out all the wrong messages to me. It sends out all the wrong messages to me. Wasn't there a case there a couple of years ago? Was it the basketball players? Remember, he was caught on camera in, in the football lift. Football player. Well, a football player, when he, yeah. when he knocked yeah. his partner out cold, Joe, was it? Yeah. When they were, they got him on the when he was in the elevator. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was, and they got coming out of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just don't get this how people, you know, how people can think it's okay to be doing that, and then other people don't do anything about it. You know, what kind of message are we sending out to people? Well, I mean, this was caught on CCTV. It went to court and he got a 12-month community order. My, my. For kicking, and I mean kicking now because uh, you can look at the footage yourselves. You'll find it in one of the online places. Uh, Liang Winbo, he's, uh, he, won a, he won a couple of majors, uh, I think, and uh, he got a 12-month community order. And I think he's got a 12-month suspension from the tour. And uh, it doesn't stop them, of course, making money, like because they do exhibitions and all of that crap. But that's beside the point. I think it's all the wrong message, lads. I think the the WPB at the, the world governing body of snooker should have been more severe. Why, been why, more why, severe. Well, why should they be more severe? Well, I mean, they can directly affect him directly, whereas the, the court made a made a stupid, a stupid, stupid judgment. I'm sure it can be appealed. I don't okay. know. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's let's be fair to both to everyone here. All right. I'm very yeah. loath about commenting in situations like this, especially yeah. when a sports star is a sports player is involved. 
The reason being is this, is that there's probably thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that have done worse than what he's done, get less sentences, and are still working next week. So let's be fair, okay? We shouldn't so, be focusing on what this guy did. We should be focusing on why the court felt it, that it just deserved a 12-month community service, right? Now, yeah. the guy is allowed to work. I mean, he's entitled to work, okay? And as I said, yeah. there's people out there who have done heinous crimes out there and will be working next day. There's people who have molested their own children. They'd be in work next week, right? And that's just... And I just... I find it a bit uncomfortable when these things happen with sports stars or with actors or whatever, because which we're saying that these guys should be up on the pedestal, but this have this cancelled culture where they're not allowed to work again. The fact of the matter is this, whether we like it or not, the man has been sentenced by a court in the UK, right? We don't agree with the sentence, but we're not lawyers and we're not judges. It's the people who are making the decisions, right? Why, why should, I mean, I would go back to when the Ulster rugby players, right, where they were found, and let's be fair, clear about this, they were found not guilty in a court of law, yet basically public opinion was a second court and basically got those players turfed out of Ireland where it says, no, you can't play in Ireland. We don't want you playing here. Go elsewhere. So it was basically a typical Irish thing where we export our problems elsewhere. Okay? Like what we've always done with our problems over the last 100 years. And that's what is uncomfortable for me, is that, yes, what Liang Wenbull has done is outrageous and it's horrendous and you have to have your sympathy towards the woman in question, right? But I am a little bit uncomfortable when we're saying that the sporting organisation should have done more. No, the court should have done more. No more, no You're less. You're right, yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, it, it's just enough. You know, <coughs> I don't remember what happened that football day that time when he knocked out uh, his partner, Cole, Stone Cold. Did he? Um, I, he got suspended. And I'm not sure um, for how long he got suspended. Yeah. But, you know, I'm... I'm I'm a little bit like Chris on this one, you know. I mean, just because you're a famous person or because you you're an athlete or what have you, uh, you should just be judged the same as everybody else. You know, we had it with Michael Vick when he was uh, the Atlanta Falcons quarterback, and he had a a dog fighting syndicate. Yeah, uh, and yeah. And they got busted for it, and he got sent to jail. Oh, he was in jail, I think, for three years for that. Yeah, uh, he served his sentence. He came back to society, uh, had paid his debt, and ended up playing for um, I think uh, right. Philadelphia. There's I think he Philadelphia. I mean, you're right. There's no reason for sport in golf. Should we have a golfer who's been? suspended three times for taking drugs and he's still playing. So look, they have their own standards in each sport that they aspire to and uh, who are we to judge really, you know? Is that well, what it's, we'll funny, it's, it's funny how, you know, in the week that we had in it, you know, like, like what happened last week where um, a man violently assaulted another man on worldwide television, right? Now, if that happened outside uh, a local hostelry, you know, the cops be called and your man be taken away. I mean, you, and that's the matter of the fact. But, you know, now we, so we've got now a double standards where we're, we're looking to basically hang a guy who has been, now, please don't get me wrong, and I don't want people to cancel me after this, but the point I'm making is this, is that, you know, there's a lot of people out there. I mean, I, I, let me just say it this way. If we decide as a society that every person who has committed a criminal sentence or a crime, right, a heinous crime or like that, that they are not allowed to work, then there's going to be an awful lot of unemployed people around the world. That's true. That's true as well. But one of the things that cheered me up over the weekend is that the, a cracking Australian women's team won the World Cup. Of course, as you know, Darwin, I forgot who they beat now, but anyway, they won it very well, the World Cup. That's fantastic. 
Lads, I know they haven't really seen it. I thought it was just magnificent. Uh, they beat England, as you know, Derwin, and the next World Cup is in Australia, I was reading. It's women's World Cup. But the women, the, the women's tennis player are a World Cup players so are just I just love the sport myself. I'm after getting to like it the last couple of years of my old my old That's the women's version, is it? He's back for the women's thing again, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to talk about tennis, but we forget about the the the, the Polish tennis player Schwiatek. Uh, won Miami Open. The significance of that is that she won a 6 4, 6 love against Osaka. She's now about to be installed as world number one. That was a 1000 series. And this new guy coming up could be a bet for one of the majors in tennis is uh, Alcanes from uh, Spain, a fantastic player. Hard court is his speciality. That's him. Um, the World Cup draw took place. I don't know if you for this for soccer uh, in. Uh, in that absolute bastion of soccer, Qatar, who have no football league, have no football team, had no football stadiums of any kind, and they got the World Cup of football. Did no you just say you, did, did you just say you had Qatar? You want to see a doctor about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, tell when you riddle me that. How could they get? The World Cup. <laughs> we know, we know, we know, we know how they got the World Cup. And they've, they've been drawn in Group A. I won't go through more because there's, eight, eight, there's 32 teams. Should we just that, go to Group B? Should we just go to Group B? Yeah. Uh, How, why don't we just go to semi finals because you think you're there already? <laughs> what do you mean, semi? No, no, no. Because you can't win, win Demi's. <laughs> They're going to win it. They're going to win it. They're already favourites to win it. It's just coming in. home. Can't you hear that song? It's calm, you know. <laughs> See, it's you, get to a, you, you get a semi, you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> it's coming home, is it? Uh, I have a, Chris, I it's... had a semi, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this... This reminds me of when Scotland, when Ali McLeod <laughs> was there, was it Ali McLeod was the manager of Scotland? 78. Yeah. And they're going up to the World Cup. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, their, their song was, we're going to win the World Cup. We're I remember it well. I remember it well. And uh, as soon as they got knocked out, people in the pub, a buddy of mine had a pub, and uh, they played the song, we're going to win the World Cup, we're going to win the World Cup. And then the next song coming up was Rod Stewart, I was only joking, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in, in Qatar's group, Qatar, of course, were seeded being the host team. <laughs> I know where their players are from. Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal and Netherlands are in Group A, which uh, obviously, who's the hold the holders of the World Cup? Uh, of, um, it's France. Well, the France won it. France beat Croatia for the yeah. final. France, France, uh, Denmark, Tunisia, and one of the playoff groups uh, down in Oceania that way is with them. So you have France, um, Denmark, Tunisia, and someone else, probably uh, New Zealand or someone. But they'll be in England's group England, Iran, a bastion of soccer, USA, and probably Scotland. Could be Scotland. No. Now, hang on I, a second. Now, that, hang yeah, on. Let's be, be, let's be fair to Iran here, right? Iran are the highest ranked Asian team in the World Cup, right? They, highest Islamic team. No, the highest Asian team. They're probably the highest Islamic team as well, <laughs> right? But then again, that might that that people in England might be offended by that as well. But we see. <laughs> but. <laughs> But no, but this, this, but let, Iran, Iran produced Ali Dai, who has the most World Cup goals. Come right? on, Chris. Come played, on. Come played on. for Bayern Go Munich on. in his day. Good player. Scored, They've got pedigree. Chris, he scored 12 goals in one game, for God's sake, against the team. Didn't Harry Kane back. score six? What's the problem? I know, against Liechtenstein, uh, is it? Uh, against of... his own team, I say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but uh, England, England, England. <laughs> so who, who do you think will be in that playoff? Would it, would it be, so it could be England, Iran, USA and Wales, you think, um, Darwin? Wales, Wales. I think Wales will get there. I think they'll beat Scotland. 
Wales Jeez. have home advantage. Wales have home advantage. Yeah. And I think well, they might. There's talks about the move in the match to 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 the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff if they do that. Well, I'll tell you, there's another group. Um, I know you see it or not. I caught my. It was Portugal, Germany, Uruguay, and Korea. They're all decent enough teams. That's under there. Yeah, group. Ghana. Oh. That's Ghana. That's Ghana. Ghana. The, group, the problem it? is the problem is you're looking at the Ghana team, and because one of the Boateng brothers played for Germany, you think that's them. Yeah. But Portugal, Ghana, sorry, Uruguay and Korea, that's a decent group. Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland and Cameroon, another decent group there, I think. That's what the toughest think? group. That's the toughest group. Because Brazil. Switzerland are decent in their day. They beat France in the European Championships. Serbia would be decent and Cameroon will always be one of the top African teams. And Brazil, we don't know. Alda Neymar scored over yeah. the weekend and a few of them. Do you know, I actually think England's group's got got two real big banana skins in there. Yeah. What, fives and what else? I think, I think you've got, you've got, you've got USA is a Harry big Maguire. banana skin. And also Wales or Scotland, whichever one of those two. Oh, God. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Stop. No, honestly, there's two big banana skins there for England. You, I'm just playing the smallest violin in the world for you now. <laughs> and uh, do you know... Well, you know, you know what's going to make the difference in that group is who England get in the first game. Iran. I mean, you get you get to you get you get to a tournament, and everybody's hyped up. You're playing the first in the first night of the tournament, and everybody is fired up. That was Scotland in eighty. That was Scotland in seventy eight against Iran. Yeah, and no. it was the one all draw. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's exactly that's exactly what I'm saying. So and this is a potential one for England. That they could get somebody that's just fired up and it could derail them. You know, you just Ireland, never know. Ireland's good. Do you remember Daniel Alton with Egypt? Yeah. You see, you see, if it, I understand what Joe's saying is right, that they, if, I mean, if, if they go into that match thinking, you know, oh, we'll win this, and if they don't, the next match is against America. Which and they are a half decent team. Let's be fair; the Americans are a half decent team. And I, if you would just fear for England, if you're an English fan, that they would play well, whoever you know, either Scotland, Wales, or Ukraine, in a last match needing something because England don't have a good record when it comes to them needing something in the final match. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, problem. look what happened to them in South Africa. Yeah, they drew one-one with the US in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. And, uh, honestly, I think I, Joe. I honestly think that USA game's a banana skin. Yeah, it is. And I think well, if, if they have that banana skin with the US, and then they've got Wales or Scotland in that last game, which is what the fixture is, mm, yeah. Then you're not you you you're you're staring down the barrel of a gun there. Yeah, you are. I mean, look what happened with Scotland in the Euros. Yeah, one one at Wembley. You know, all of a sudden you're playing a home country. It brings a whole different dynamic to the... Yeah. To no, no, the look, look what happened with, with, with England and Iceland. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and the yeah. draw for England would be that if they don't finish top of their group, it's probably them playing the Netherlands in the next round, which is going to be a humdinger. Yeah, it'll be and Netherlands or Qatar, won't it? In Qatar. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Senegal, Senegal, Senegal will come out of that. Many, many, Mr. Many and Senegal will come out of that. They're group talking F, me. Group, group F, you have Belgium, Canada, Morocco and Croatia. That's another decent group, lads. Yeah. Well, that's Belgium and Croatia, isn't it? Well, the Canadians have been proven. I mean, they've got a lot of players playing in Europe now, so it's, as Joe would know. They have, an, they have an English manager as well, you know. And he's supposed to be very, very popular. You have Spain, Germany, Japan, and a qualifier. Spain, Germany, and Japan. Japan are handy, you know. I don't think they're the force to Spain and Germany they have to come out of Group E, really, wouldn't they? I don't know. I Germany's not, not firing on all cylinders, are they? No, really. they're tough. They're a tough tournament. They're all, they're, they always yeah, get in. Against the tournament, they're different. We, yeah, they are, yeah. When the draw came out the other day, we were feeling sorry for Ronaldo and Portugal because they're up against Uruguay and South Korea, which basically means they're going to get kicked all over the place and then the South Koreans are going to run the death out of them. So, I mean, they, they get no respite from that group. I mean, that's that's a group that's of a death for group. Portugal. 
Uruguay, who wouldn't be the the sharpest tools in the box, right? <laughs> but they know they know how to kick people. While the South <laughs> Koreans are just basically on battery acid and just keep running for for, for, for all day long. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's yeah. going to happen. And that you Provide, know, provide, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say throw a bit of sand, but Group C is Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. And Poland are a poor team. Poland are a poor team. Lewandowski yeah. is keeping that guy. I mean, he must have short, sore shoulders carrying that that twenty three men. You know, Lewandowski. Um, yeah, Lewandowski's the only player they have really. Let's be fair. And Magic yeah. Cash. Well, what about? I mean, okay, that <coughs> as you said, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. There's always one minnow who, who goes a long ways in the thing. I don't know. I can't really see. Well, look, England. That, England will be the minnow that go a long way. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know about England myself. What kind? What kind of odds are there for the World Cup? Oh, it's awesome, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be probably the top four favourites. England, yeah, 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 yeah. Because the draw, see, when you look at a draw like that, you're looking at say, right, if they win their group, which they are expected to do, who do they play the next round? Then they look at the draw and they're going, do you know what? Mm, fine, they're going to I mean, look, they weren't the best. They weren't, you know, they. I expect them. We had this discussion last year. I expect them to get to the final because they had home advantage and it meant a big, big difference. Not travelling, playing all your matches at home, maybe bar one. Um, massive difference. You know, England, I, I just get the feeling that England, like, you know, they have a settled squad. It's not the best team in the world, but you know what? You don't have to be the best team in the world. No, you don't. have to be well organised and they are that, I suppose, to give them credit. There's eight groups. There's 32 teams. I think it's a straight... Two teams from each group to the last that's 16. It. Isn't it? That's it. That's there's it. no there's no permutation at it's just the top two, and that's it, isn't it? Yep. That well, makes Joe, it easy for you to do your do your sums, you know. What I mean it make it easy for you. Who do you think will win it, Joe? Yourself, the World Cup in December. Who? Is it December it's on? Yeah. You know, I think you know, you're talking about that. This may actually prove to be to England's advantage playing it. At this time of the year, mid season, just because they will, their their players are not going to be worn out like they usually are in the World Cup year. You've got, you've had all your top teams involved in Europe all the way through, and then you're finishing up and you're going straight into a World Cup. Uh, they've just played 38 Premiership matches. They're beaten up. They're uh, all those things. This might be something that actually suits them a, a little bit more. You know they they may have they may go into this fresher than they would uh, at another time, but I, I think France are going to take some beating. I really so don't. You, yeah, your money was you know, in France. Go so on. did you guys see the um, the Egypt game and what happened in that game? Yeah, yeah, the laser show. Yeah. yeah. What I mean, what do you make of that? How do, how do, is that? allowed and goes unpunished in well, a stadium. Well, the point about it is, it's like we were talking earlier with a different matter. What do you do? What do you do? You walk off. Well, I'm if surprised you, Salah went ahead with the penalty. You, you walk off, Joe. You walk off, boys. You walk yeah. off. I think it's the only thing the team goes off with the manager and off, off the pitch. I think Absolutely. Right. 100%. 100%. But Chris, what I mean, does the referee take both teams off yep. and say that now we're going to empty the stands? One hundred percent. And we're going to have a shootout in front yep. of. And that's, that's if that's what it does, that's what you do. Because I think, you mean, what I, do you do, Joe? The, the question is, what do you do? Because when I mean, England got fined in the European Championship semi final for doing the same against Denmark, and it wasn't even a one hundredth of what happened in the Egypt match. I mean, you couldn't even see it when England played Denmark. It was only afterwards you heard about it. Says, really? Didn't right. know was that? But, I mean, you could see it. He was like, he was, Mo Salah was lit up like a Christmas tree. Yes, he was. And it was he all was. on the pitch. And, I mean, if the referee couldn't see that or somebody couldn't bring that to the referee's attention, then that's a dereliction of duty. Well, 
Joe's pick is France. I won't go to you, Darren, because you're picking England to win the World Cup, aren't you? And uh, <laughs> and uh, Chris, who do you think? I know it's very early. It's, it's it's very early. I mean, I I'd say I it I wouldn't be surprised because I know these countries have played in the Middle East a lot lately. I I just have a sneaky feeling for Brazil. So Brazil, England, France, and I'm going to go for another European team, which I think could be the Dark Horses. The Netherlands, I think, are, could, could win it. But anyway, so we have the Netherlands, France, England, it's coming home maybe, and uh, Brazil. And from, from uh, Joe, from Chris and Darwin and myself, last till we meet again, it's been a blast on this edition of the Final Whistle. So until we see each other again, good night and take care and good luck. Good night, guys. Take Good care. Good night, everybody. Take care, guys. See ya. And I, I saw, I was doing something in the house, but I, I was, happened to see the, the France-Ireland match, if you could call it a match. Uh, France 40, Ireland 5, Wales 24, Scotland 19, and um, uh, Italy and England, I think that was, uh, was 57-0 or something. At 27.